guess the first thing to do is establish where we are. This is Conway Studios. We're here to talk about Mac Miller's album Circles. Mac spent some time out here and loved yeah. it out here. And this is a beautiful album that's been made by somebody who's sadly no longer here to celebrate it and talk us through it personally. He was really, really wonderful in the studio. I meet a kid, I like him. He comes over, oh, he's nice and funny. Okay, this is cool. Oh, he seems kind of smart. Let's see if that's true. He comes in and he plays five or six things the first night. And I was floored because there was stuff that ended up on both albums. There was more hip hop leaning stuff. And it was great and funny and personal. And after a couple of those, he'd go, I've got these art things I'm not sure what to do with. And, you know, when he said something like that, I was all ears. I don't think there was a grand design. He liked the idea of there being connective tissue. Well, this is what it looked like right before you fall. The album starts with circles. The opening lyric is so beautifully self-aware. Oh, God, yeah. And the opening line being, you know, well. Really, not self-conscious, just like, mm, well, uh, okay, here, here goes. You know, it's also a beautifully arranged piece of music. I think circles is a perfect indication of, he walked in and it was good. Can you give us an example of a song where you were more involved in the arrangement and helping him flesh it out? I mean, Good News would probably be the most blatant example. The track was just sort of meandering. And I said, I thought the lyrics were incredible. It didn't have the chorus yet. And I just said, I, like, I love what you're saying. And then I did with him what I've done with a bunch of directors, which is watch the body language then we started going to town with basic structure. And he came into the control room and he was really excited. He's like, this is great, I love this. I'm like, I'm really into it too. And he started singing over it in the control room and he sang the chorus of good news. And I look up and go, that's great. Go run onto the mic. He's like, uh, really? I'm like, yes, that's, that's the chorus. And then he really was like taken aback. He's like, I don't know, I was thinking maybe this could be some other song and a very rare moment of like taking the chance on changing the vibe. <laughs> Just went, no, you're wrong. That's the chorus, go sing it. If you hate it later and we want to argue about it, fine, but go do that. Good news, good news, good news, that's all they want to hear. They don't like you when I'm done. That's not something I created. That's something he was doing, and I was only asking him to recognize that it was already great. I basically had eight or nine where we had laid out everything with him, and they were near done. And then when the family asked me to do this, which I'm beyond honored by, but listening through stuff, I found a few songs that I hadn't even worked on that were song-based. Like, oh my God, he had never even gotten around to playing me these yet. Which ones? I Can See. I Can See would come up. And I'd be beyond delighted, because I'm like, this is good by anybody's standards, in any genre. This human being expressing themselves well. Um, Love the track. And then it would turn back to a torture, because you're like, Oh my God, and you were capable of that. Show me something, show me something, show me something, and all I know if life is but a dream and so are we. Now that's one of the many lyrics on this album that in retrospect, through the uh, lost goggles, but people are gonna have that experience because he was already self-aware and was unafraid of expressing it. But beyond that, lyrical wonder of honesty, the melody just made me cry.
That's on me, which has like got this really oh. kind of timeless waltz to it. People usually say beatle when they hear it. I told them I loved the piano. I was sideswiped by the song and the feeling of it. To be honest with you, this is what he usually said. Oh, you should just play everything. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's, you're already great. You keep playing me this stuff. I know you can play, so no. I eventually developed a little system where the compromise was, okay, tell you what, I'll play bass as long as you do as well. I'd set it up so we could each sort of be in front of one of the speakers and I'd hand them. So it was like we each had our own little amp, but we're listening to the same song and face each other and play. And it was great fun. Why is Once a Day the last song on the album and how do you come to terms with the track listing when Mac's not here to sort of help pull that all together? At some point, somebody has to make some decisions. I put it there in the sequence and I'll tell you why. He came over, played two or three things. That was one of them. I looked forward to his visit so much because every time there was like this new discovery of like, you're hiding this. This thing is fully fleshed out. It's personal, it's heartbreaking. And I just said, hey, I just think the straight piano is a little typical. He was like, yeah, I wondered about that. I'm like, I've got this old, like, cool 70 synth that's touch sensitive. Why don't you just sit down? I'll dial in a song and play it. And as usual, he said, no, you play it. I'm like, no, play it. It's like the anthropological thing if, you know, if you're going and studying a culture, you know, don't disturb anything. Or I have to make these weird psychological judgments sometimes <laughs> working. And one of them will involve how to short circuit someone else's self-consciousness. In his case, he had a self-consciousness about playing and always wanted to hand the instrument to me. I left the room, but I didn't close the door. I, I didn't leave, I stood in the door basically a room and a half away from the control room with the control room door open. And he started playing and the vocal was coming out. And this is how I can tell you I'm not looking at it with lost goggles. I bawled my eyes out, heard it twice in a row. I kind of poked my head around the door, said, oh, I heard a little bit of that, that sounds good. Just do a double of that keyboard, just right now while it sounds up. Okay, cool. Boom, ran out into the hallway and cried again and dried my eyes out and went back in and sat through the usual, was that good? Are you sure you shouldn't just play it? I'm like, I love that. That's great. That was just killing me because I refused to play musically on it because it was already great. I could hear it was there. So that's why it's there because it, it ripped my guts to shreds. I really appreciated your honesty and reflection on this process. I, uh, I know it's tough. I already had plans about the future involving him. So I had a pile of instruments put aside to give him. I was more excited about him than I've been in quite some time.